This is part two of the Chapter 10 lecture series on long-term liabilities, specifically bond issuances. Let's get started. Long-term liabilities are obligations that a company expects to pay more than one year in the future. In large companies, the most common type of long-term liability, and the one that we will focus on, is bonds. Bonds are a form of interest-bearing notes payable issued by corporations, universities, and governmental agencies. They are typically sold in small denominations such as $1,000. However, an entity will normally sell a large quantity of them such as $500, so the total proceeds received by the entity would be $500,000. Just keep in mind that bonds are simply a means used by companies, universities, and governmental agencies to get money. They issue bonds and in exchange receive money. The bond itself is similar to a note because it represents a promise to pay interest at certain intervals and a final interest payment plus principal on the maturity date. The major difference between a bond and a traditional note that we have discussed is that a bond will typically involve periodic interest payments. These periodic interest payments are called coupon payments. There are several types of bonds. Secured bonds are secured by specific assets meaning that if the entity does not pay the bondholders as promised, the bondholders will receive the assets that collateralize the bonds. Unsecured bonds are not secured by specific assets. These types of bonds are typically only issued by companies with exceptionally good credit. Convertible bonds are bonds that allow the bondholders to convert them into common stock if they so choose. Lastly, callable bonds allow the borrower to retire or pay off the bonds prior to maturity. There are several important terms that relate to bond issuances. First, the bond certificate provides the evidence that a claim against the company exists. The bondholder is given the bond certificate in exchange for money. The certificate indicates the name of the company issuing the bonds, the face value of the bond, the maturity date, and the contractual or stated interest rate. The face value of a bond is the principal due at maturity. It is the amount the entity will pay to the bondholder at maturity. Bonds payable will always be credited by this amount. The maturity date is the date the principal and the final coupon payment is due. The contractual stated or coupon rate determines the interest to be paid to the holder. The annual interest payment is calculated by multiplying the face value of the bond times the contractual rate. The market rate, on the other hand, is the interest rate that investors can earn on a similar investment in the marketplace. Lastly, the bond price is the amount the bondholder will pay to acquire the bond. It is the amount of money the entity will receive when it issues the bonds. Surprisingly, this amount is not always the face value. The bond price is determined based on how the contractual rate compares to the market rate. Remember, the contractual rate is the interest that the bondholder will be paid on the bond, and the market rate is the interest that they could earn on a similar investment in the marketplace. Let's assume that I'm interested in purchasing a $1,000 bond that is offering a 6% contractual rate. I do my homework and discover that comparable bonds are offering 8% interest, which means the market rate is 8%. If I have to pay $1,000 for a bond that will pay me 6% interest, or $1,000 for a similar bond that will pay me 8% interest, I will of course choose the 8% bond to earn an extra 2% in interest. The company offering the 6% bond knows that I will choose the 8% bond it must provide me some incentive to purchase its bond instead of the 8% bond. What incentive does it offer? It offers a lower bond price to compensate for the lower interest rate. The bond will still have a $1,000 face value, meaning that I will receive $1,000 in principal when the bond matures. However, I will not have to pay $1,000 to purchase the bond. I will have to pay an amount less than $1,000 to make up for the interest that I'm missing out on. The opposite may also be true. Let's instead assume that the contractual rate is 8% and the market rate is 6%.
In this scenario, people are willing to pay more for the 8% bonds because the bonds are paying an additional 2% interest than comparable bonds in the marketplace. Therefore, the bond price will actually be more than the face value. People are willing to pay more than what they will be paid at maturity in order to earn the additional interest. As a recap, the contractual rate is the interest rate earned on a particular bond. The market rate is the interest rate earned on comparable investments in the marketplace. The face value of a bond is the principal paid to the bondholder at maturity. And the bond price is the amount paid to the company when the bonds are issued. A bond can be issued at face value, at a discount, or at a premium. When a bond is issued at face value, the company will receive the face value of the bonds, meaning the face value and the bond price are equal. This also indicates that the contractual rate and the market rate are the same. If a bond is issued at a discount, the contractual rate is less than the market rate, and therefore the bond price, or the amount the company will receive at issuance, is less than the face value or the amount that they will have to pay back at maturity. As an example, bonds with a face value of 700,000 issued at 98 and 1 fourth means that they are issued at 98 and a quarter percent of their face value or 687,750. This means that the company will issue bonds with a face value of 700,000 and will receive cash upon issuance of 687750 When the bonds mature, the company will pay 700000 to its bondholders. Again, the company is willing to take less for the bonds because it is paying a lower interest rate than comparable bonds in the marketplace. If a bond is issued at a premium, the contractual rate is more than the market rate, and therefore the bond price is more than the face value. As an example, Bonds with a face value of 700,000 issued at 101 and 1 fourth means that they are issued at 101 and a quarter percent of their face value or 708,750. This means that the company will issue bonds with a face value of 700,000 and will receive cash upon issuance of 708,750. When the bonds mature, the company will pay $700,000 to its bondholders. Investors are willing to pay more for these bonds than what they will receive at maturity because these bonds offer a higher interest rate than comparable bonds in the marketplace. A helpful hint to know whether bonds are issued at a premium or discount is if the percent given is less than 100, the bonds are issued at a discount, and if the percent given is more than 100, the bonds are issued at a premium. As an example, on January 1, 2013, Kitwood Company issued bonds with a face value of $500,000. They carry a stated interest rate of 7% payable each January 1st. Let's first assume that the bonds are issued at 97. A bond issued at 97 means that it is issued at 97% of its face value or $485,000. The company will receive $485,000 from investors upon issuance of the bonds. When the bonds mature, the company will pay the face value of $500,000. Bonds issued at 97 are issued at a discount, which indicates that the contractual rate is lower than the market rate. To entice potential investors to invest, the company accepts less money than it will pay at maturity. Now, let's look at the entry we would make upon issuance. We must debit cash for $485,000 because that is the amount that we will receive upon issuance. We will credit bonds payable for the face value of $500,000. The difference of $15,000 will be debited to an account called Discount on Bonds Payable. This account is a contra liability account and is netted against bonds payable in the liability section of the balance sheet. Now let's assume that the bonds are issued at 102. A bond issued at 102 means that it is issued at 102% of its face value or $510,000. The company will receive $510,000 from investors upon issuance of the bonds. When the bonds mature, the company will pay the face value of $500,000. Bonds issued at 102 are issued at a premium, which indicates that the contractual rate is higher than the market rate. Investors are willing to pay more for the bonds than what they will receive at maturity. Now, let's look at the entry we would make upon issuance. 
we must debit cash for 510000 because that is the amount that we will receive upon issuance. We will credit bonds payable for the face value of 500000 The difference of 10000 will be credited to an account called premium on bonds payable. This account is a liability account and is added to bonds payable in the liability section of the balance sheet. Remember, cash is always debited for the bond price, bonds payable is always credited for the face value, and the difference is either debited to discount on bonds payable if the bonds are issued at a discount, or credited to premium on bonds payable if the bonds are issued at a premium. This completes part two of the chapter 10 lecture series on bond issuances. Now let's learn about bond retirements.